We're trapping great egrets today and putting uh, GPS, GSM transmitters on them. This is new technology that we're using to track egrets and we're getting um, data on these birds that we haven't gotten before. So um, today we caught um, birds that are just getting ready to fledge. So we'll have an entire life history for these birds for the next five to eight years as to where they go, where they winter, where they breed. Um, how long it takes them to migrate. So this is really sort of groundbreaking data for great egrets. We have transmitters on these birds now. We have eight transmitters on, on great egrets and uh, birds that we caught at Lake Madame Mesquite in March. One of them is now at Niagara Falls and the other one is in Gloucester, Massachusetts. But uh, they could be wintering in Belize or in Mexico or in Central America. So uh, they're going back and forth throughout the hemisphere. They'll probably stay north of the equator, as far as we know. We're researchers, so I'm working with Dr. Roland Kays at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Science and, Dac and Dr. Sarah Schweitzer, who works for the Wildlife Resources Commission here in North Carolina. So we have all kinds of needs for the data. We're gonna use the data to quantify how much wetlands these birds use. So it'll be important for us to know from a conservation standpoint how much, how much actual habitat they need from a conservation standpoint. And then, then when they move to different parts of the world, it's important to work with uh, conservationists in those areas as well to be able to know um, how much area they need to protect. So, um, so that's the research branch of it. There's energetics involved with it too. We're standing in a salt marsh. This is one of the most productive ecosystems on the planet and it's producing the fish and the shrimp that these birds are feeding on. So you know, every organism has to make ends meet. So there's an energetic component to this as well. There's also an educational component. So each of the birds that we track gets assigned to a high school. And the students in the school are then um, using the data from the bird to do all kinds of classroom assignments, whether it's biology, environmental science, English. There are all kinds of educational aspects to this as well. The birds are tracked on a software called MoveBank, and anyone can log on. The data is out there for everyone to look at. It's public knowledge information, and you can look daily where the birds are. So we get one hour updates between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. for where the bird is, and then we can get actually either 20 minute or five minute data as well if we get close enough to the bird to download information. The transmitters run on solar power, so they're going to be working indefinitely. So we have the educational aspect and we also have the research aspect as well. That's the really critical data that we're getting from the movement of the birds is we know exactly what kinds of habitats they're using, what amount of area they're using, and how long they're spending in each one of those habitats. And that's all been made possible because of this new GPS GSM technology. Um, so for the first time, we're really able to document how much habitat an individual, is bir an individual bird is using. And then if you know how many birds are in an area and you know how, much, how, much, how many calories they need in a day, you have a pretty good model as to the amount of resources, both from a habitat perspective and also from a caloric perspective that the birds are needing. And of course, the marsh is producing the calories. The sun is shining on the marsh right now. The nutrients that are being captured by the marsh grass eventually work their way into the ecosystem, which nourishes the bacteria, the fungi, the shrimp, and then all the way up the food chain to the fish. So these marshes are critical for, for these birds. It's all connected. So far, it's been working. We caught our first bird on March 3rd, and today is June 23rd. We still have all of our tags on our birds. Um, the bird that we tagged first is a, a non-breeding bird. It's, a, a, it's one year old um, right about now, um, and it's hanging out near Beaufort, North Carolina. Basically hasn't left the area since March. So it's working. And our teachers are working with the students. The students are excited every day they come in, they wanna know where their bird is. So uh, we've named the birds after the principals and the uh, project's working great so far. Audubon, North Carolina has brought many researchers to our sanctuary islands over the years, so having John come in order to do the egret tracking project is part of a long tradition, and we're always happy to facilitate research, and especially when it helps us to learn more about our birds, and the information that he's gathering will help us to know and understand 
what other areas they're using, how large of an area are they using to forage, what are their needs beyond having a good island to nest on.